So what I'm going to show you right now are some glacial landforms that result from the pushing and shoving actions of a glacier. So glaciers are made of solid ice. Um, however, they flow uh, downhill, not too dissimilar from, uh, from a river or any other fluid. Glaciers will always flow from a higher point and seek a lower point, such as an ocean. And as the glacier is flowing downhill, it's pushing and shoving all this material in front of it, a bit like a snowplow or a bulldozer. That action that a glacier is, is shoving all this material results in a handful of specific glacial structures that we're going to explore right now. So I'm going to grab our glacier, I'm gonna set it here, and I'm going to make this glacier advance. So uh, for this glacier to advance, I'm going to shove it downhill, it's pushing, shoving all this material in front of it. I'm going to advance a little ways here. So this glacier has just advanced and you can see it's shoved all this material up in front of it. Now for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm using only sand so that it's easy to see these glacial landforms. However, out there in nature where glaciers are actually flowing around, there's all kinds of sediments. There's large boulders and rocks, gravel, sand, clay, silt, all kinds of, of sediments that are pushed around and affected by these glaciers. So in reality, this little ridge of material that's been shoved up in front of this glacier is made of a mix of gravel, sand, clay. It's unsorted, unconsolidated, uh, this churned up mix of sediments. That mix of sediments is called glacial till. And we find glacial till all over the place where glaciers uh, have been at work. So I'm going to let this glacier melt away and retreat. And then we'll, uh, we'll look at this structure that's left behind and we'll name it. And then I will initiate uh, a number of other glaciation events. When I do that, we'll see a number of other structures begin to appear uh, on this glacial landscape. So uh, let me just go ahead and let this melt away and retreat, and we'll come back in a little bit. Okay, so our glacier has receded, it has melted away. And remember that glaciers flow a little bit like a river. They're like a river of snow or ice. They flow downhill only. So just because a glacier has retreated, it doesn't mean that it has somehow reversed direction and is flowing uphill. That's impossible. Instead, what a retreating or receding glacier means is that the terminus of the glacier, the front part of the glacier that acts a bit like a plow or a bulldozer, the terminus has melted away faster than it's being replaced by ice and snow. Earth has natural cooling and warming climate cycles that are, that are always going on. And so uh, after a cool period where the glacier advances, it may begin to get warmer and the glacier starts to recede. So the average behavior of the glacier from this point on in this example is recession. The glacier is melting away, it's retreating. Um, however, there are little pulses of advances where the glacier will, will advance a little bit uh, before it begins to recede again. And so what I'm gonna do here is take, uh, you know, this is really the same glacier. This is just the glacier which, you know, after retreating, um, it's we're gonna see a little bit of an advance now. So I'm gonna set my glacier here. I'm going to simulate some advancing here. So our glacier is, is now shoving forward that terminus, that new terminus is pushing forward pushing forward, shoving all the that glacial till and all that material in front of it. It's going to stop about there. And now once again, uh, I'm going to let the glacier recede. I'm going to let it melt away. I'm actually going to do this a few times uninterrupted. I'm going to initiate some cycles of advance followed by retreat. Uh, and so we'll look at what these new structures are called um, after I do a few cycles of advance followed by retreat. So we've had our series of, 
of glaciation events, but the landforms that I want to bring to your attention right now are called end moraines. There's two kinds of end moraines. The first one I want to point out is this one right here. So this ridge of material that was pushed forward by our first glaciation event um, is called a terminal moraine. The terminal moraine is made of glacial till that was pushed and shoved right here by the terminus of the glacier. Terminus just means the end of the glacier. And this moraine, this ridge of material, marks the maximum advance of our glacier. It's the very farthest that any of these glaciations went. And so we call that the terminal moraine, the end, the very farthest that that glacier ever advanced. But there's another kind of end moraine on this landscape, and these are recessional moraines. So after that first initial advance, which created our terminal moraine, the average trend of the glacier was to recede or retreat. It was melting away faster than it was being replaced with ice and snow. So even though the average trend of the glacier is recession, it will have these little spurts, these little growth spurts. And it's in those little growth spurts that it pushes forward and it creates another moraine right here. And then it will retreat a little bit and it advance a little and create another moraine right there. Retreat a little, advance a little bit, create one more moraine, go back, advance a little bit, and then create another moraine here. These moraines were created while the glacier's average behavior was recession. As such, these are called recessional moraines. They look quite a bit like a terminal moraine, um, only they're behind it. They're actually set behind the terminal moraine. Recessional moraines sometimes are a little bit more delicate than the terminal moraine. The terminal moraine is this big, tough, robust looking structure, and the recessional moraines are a little bit more delicate. And I want to point out that there's no rule that says that a glacier has to produce any recessional moraines. Um, it can produce, you know, several as it has here. There's one, two, three, four recessional moraines, or it could produce none. Uh, it just depends on, on what the uh, uh, long-term and short-term cycles are as that glacier retreats, as it melts away and recedes. Now, as sort of an added bonus, I have included one particular feature here, and they're called glacial erratics. And what an erratic is, uh, it's, a, it's a rock uh, which has been transported by a glacier some distance from its point of origin. Glacial erratics are interesting because they can hint uh, at the extent of past glaciations. If you find some big boulders uh, somewhere in a formerly glaciated area, you can trace those boulders back to their origin and you can actually figure out how far those glaciers were flowing and transporting these materials. So these stones are glacial erratics. So I want to show you one more thing concerning end moraines, and that is the power of an advancing glacier and to show you what an advancing glacier can do to a landscape. So this glacial landscape has all these glacial features. There's drumlins and eskers and the erratics and all kinds of moraines. Um, and uh, suppose now that we have uh, a, a global cooling event, everything cools off, and so glaciers are now all advancing. So I have a big slab of ice here that I'm going to advance through the landscape and show you what that does to these features. I'll let it melt and we'll look at that and we'll see what uh, landforms are left. Here is our big slab of glacier ice. Sort of set this down here, pretend that it's advancing, pushing and shoving. Okay, so we'll stop it there. Um, we're going to go ahead and let this guy melt, and then we'll talk about what this advance means for this landscape and uh, in the context of glacial landforms. That glacier is out of there. It has melted away, it has receded completely, and as it advanced through this landscape, uh, all of those previous structures that were there, uh, the, the moraines, the drumlins, eskers, all that stuff that was there, it just plowed them right under. It pretty much erased uh, them from the landscape. We've got like a clean slate at this point. So that's an important thing to note about glacial maximums is that as the glacier is advancing and that terminus is just plowing under all of those older landforms, they're gone. Uh, and so that means that we really can only study the glacial landforms from the most recent glacial maximum. In this particular case, this glacier left a great big terminal moraine, a brand new one, way up at the front here. Um, it also happened to produce two new lateral moraines, 
We'll see those again later in this video. Um, but otherwise, everything else has been pretty much erased, obliterated, plowed under by the pushing and shoving action of that terminus. So this means that there's a limitation on what we can study. We can really only study glacial landforms produced by the most recent glacial maximum.